Have you ever woken up to find out that your partner shaved your head out of anger and burned all your childhood pictures the night before? Probably not, but it sure did happen to actress Connie Stevens. Let's take a look at why Stevens' marriage almost ruined her career and even led her to the verge of overdosing. Stevens saw a man get shot in front of her eyes at a very young age. Connie Stevens was born Concetta Rosalie Ann Ingoglia in 1938. Both her parents were musicians, but even though they might have seemed compatible at first glance, they were traumatizing for young Stevens as they used to fight regularly. Her parents eventually ended up getting a divorce, and Stevens chose to stay away from all the drama and live with her grandparents. She and her brother eventually attended Catholic boarding school. While coming home from school one day, Stevens was waiting at the bus stop when she saw a guy right in front of her get murdered. This took a negative toll on her life, and it traumatized her. Stevens became frightened to go to school and even isolated herself. Her family members became afraid of whether she would become mentally unstable in the future, so they sent her away to live with family friends in Missouri. Because she came from a musical family, Stevens became part of a singing group with Tony Butala called The Foremost. Tony later made a name for himself when he became the founder of The Letterman. In 1953, Stevens believed she was ready to leave Missouri and move in with her father, who at the time lived in Los Angeles. She later joined another singing group called The Three Debs, while also attending the Georgia Massey Professional School in the San Fernando Valley. Her passion for music and entertainment beat the interest she had for school, and she managed to become a part of the local repertory theater. This new opportunity would lead Stevens to launch her acting career after she was discovered by a person that worked with Warner Brothers. From 77 Sunset Strip to Cookie Cookie, Lend Me Your Comb. After being discovered, Stevens signed a contract with Warner Brothers and made her first professional debut in a popular TV show called 77 Sunset Strip. Stevens then released a single with one of her co-stars, Ed Burns, called Cookie Cookie, Lend Me Your Comb. They sang the song on 77 Sunset Strip, and it instantly became a hit. And from that point on, Stevens never turned her head back. She continued living her dream life, performing on stage from one place to the other, the marriage from hell. 1963 would be one of the worst years of Stevens' life after she married actor James Stacy. The actor wasn't only abusive, he was also a psychopath, according to the actress. When Stevens spoke about the marriage in an interview, she said that James Stacy was her life regret. She revealed that he once burned all of her baby photos out of anger and also shaved a chunk of her hair while the actress was sleeping. And that was not all that Stevens had to face. She also had to deal with Stacy's severe mental and physical abuse. Her situation was sucking all the life she had in her. Stevens later finally got the courage to file divorce papers. But the situation with Stacy didn't end there. Ten years after getting a divorce from Stevens, the actor was arrested for assaulting an 11-year-old girl for his own pleasures. In 1995, Stacy was indicted by authorities after he failed to appear in the Ventura County Superior Court. Luckily, police managed to find him and arrest him in Honolulu, Hawaii at the time he was attempting to escape from California. From the looks of it, Stacy must have hated the idea of going to jail, as even after getting caught, he tried to attempt suicide by jumping off a building. The fall only led him to experience severe injuries and eventually made a full recovery after being sent to a hospital. After recovering, Stevens' ex-husband was sent back to California to complete his trial. The prosecutor at court was willing to give Stacy a light sentence. However, after finding out that the actor had other charges of sneaking into the homes of other young girls, he received a full sentence at the California Institute for Men at Chino. Stevens' life-threatening addiction. After her divorce from Stacy, Stevens met the pop singing star of the 1950s, Eddie Fisher, who gave the actress a series of other problems that she didn't need in her life. Fisher might have been a bit better than Stacy was, but he was not even close to perfect. Before meeting Stevens, he was involved in a hilarious scandal back in 1959 where he married Elizabeth Taylor only three hours after getting divorced from actress Debbie Reynolds. When Fisher first met Stevens, she was suffering from depression. Her divorce from Stacy had traumatized her and left her broke. To cope with the devastation, Stevens began taking pills, getting high, and attending parties. After meeting Fisher, the actress brightened up a bit 
and they soon entered a romantic relationship together. The pair found out that they were expecting a child only a couple of months after. Even though the baby was born, they didn't get married at first, after Stevens was still healing from her previous marriage. However, when she fell pregnant for a second time, Fisher took Stevens to Puerto Rico and asked for her hand in marriage. The couple eventually ended up marrying each other, but this didn't turn Fisher into a better family man. In fact, he would not stick around to support his family for much longer. Fisher eventually became addicted to injecting substances into his veins to get high and escape the daily life that had become monotonous. He reached so far as to do this in front of his young children. But Eddie was not the only one getting high in the family. Stevens followed soon after. Unlike Fisher, she was a full-time mom and a celebrity that had to always be on the run and doing something. This led her to become addicted to speed medication, which boosted her energy. She used to take dextroamphetamine and amphetamine, which were popular medications in the 70s to treat ADHD and obesity. Stevens found comfort in taking the medication after she was going through a breakdown and feeling insecure about her weight. The pill not only made her slim down by decreasing her appetite, but it also gave her a boost in energy and confidence. She would eventually end up divorcing Eddie Fisher after both of them felt nothing for each other as the years passed. After her second failed marriage, Stevens decided that true love wasn't real and refused to keep searching for it. However, she did have a couple of short-lived romances with Neil Armstrong, Bill Medley, and even Elvis Presley. Her downfall in showbiz. After the 1980s, Stevens realized that her image was starting to diminish. Her bookings had reduced to more than double what they used to be in the 60s and 70s. This led the actress to reinvent herself. She soon started to collaborate with the beauty line she believed in. After finding the perfect beauty products, she made a great deal at the Home Shopping Network and released her brand called Forever Spring. After profiting, she started buying more real estate. However, her beauty business slowly started to fade away in a matter of years and Stevens made a return to showbiz. In 2016, the actress suffered a stroke and had to fully retire from the entertainment industry. As of 2021, she's living a peaceful life in her home in California. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and check out the next video in this series.